Aegis, advanced ground information systems, makers of LifeRing software. LifeRing puts a command operation center in the palm of your hand. In this presentation, we're going to take a look at how LifeRing software provides an integrated multi-domain air, ground, sea, C4I system. After 9-11, we all learned that many lives were lost as a result of a breakdown in communications between the various different agencies that responded to this tragedy. Hundreds of first responder agencies working within a few blocks of each other, all using different radios, using different channels, frequencies, encryptions, and procedures, were unable to communicate with each other. We realized that cell phones had the capability to provide a common communication tool necessary to effectively enable all these responders to share voice and data communication with one another. Software could provide an interface and toolset for setting up groups and efficiently sharing information. IP communications could enable digital push-to-talk to preserve radio functionality. For such a system to be viable, it had to operate on a combination of first responder, cellular, military, Iridium satellite, MANA, and other communication networks. The system needed to work with low-speed and high-speed communications and utilize a server to forward data between smartphones and PC devices. Using private funding, Aegis was founded in 2004 with a team of experienced C4i software developers. So, what is LifeRing? The short answer is, LifeRing software enables a low-bandwidth satellite communications network that provides real-time situational awareness between all smartphone, tablet, and PC users up and down the chain of command to create a scalable C4i common operational picture of the mapped area and the precise location of all participants. Some of the features of LifeRing are it's low cost, simple to use. It securely operates with PCs, Androids, and iPhones. It uses cell, radio, satcom in any combination and is encrypted. It exchanges location data, emergency notifications, messaging, chat, video, geofences, whiteboards, orders, as well as medical and logistics information. It enables push-to-talk between participants. It provides full motion video between participants. It interfaces with fighter aircraft, ships, JCR, AFATADS, CWCS, NATO, laser designators, radars, seismic and shot detectors, tracking tags, AIS, and more. It translates and forwards data received to other C4I systems so that they all share a common operational picture. LifeRing software runs in conjunction with three major components, a Windows PC, Android or iOS smartphones, and a Windows server. The Windows PC was modeled after Microsoft's suite of programs to provide a readily familiar look and feel that make operations, setup, and training fast and efficient. It is a multi-layered software with a full suite of command, communication, tracking, and mapping tools, as well as push-to-talk and video functions. You can turn a single laptop or desktop along with a large screen display into a small command center with command operational picture capabilities. It uses military and first responder radios, cellular, and handheld satellite communications in various combinations. And it provides the ability to establish groups that enable communications between PCs. Android and iOS smartphones and tablets are a perfect partner for PC-based command and control systems for many reasons. They are lightweight. They have a large high-resolution display screen. They have a multitasking operating system. They are rugged they have a low replacement cost. They enable voice and data in several combinations via cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. They have internal GPS and audio alerts, and most come with integrated cameras, a compass, an accelerometer, and gyroscope. LifeRing software enables encrypted communications and for these devices to act as handheld C4I communication systems with built-in PTT and video transmission and reception. The other advantage of smartphones is almost everyone has one and knows how to use it. The handset interface is based on Google Maps, and while military and other map options are available, all share this familiar and common UI. And the LifeRing server. LifeRing acts as a hub for multiple different systems. As an example, the data comes in from various C4I systems, and LifeRing processes it and sends it back out to be read by previously disparate systems. For example, 
data comes in from ATAC and goes out to Link 16. Link 16 data comes in from military aircraft and is transmitted to ATAC. We can receive data from NATO systems and send it back out to US command and control systems and vice versa. We can receive data from radars and other sensors and sends it out to those needing it. To accomplish these functions, the server resolves the data link protocol, format, data rate differences. So what does the data look like when we send it back out via the LifeRing interface? Here we are displaying data coming in from multiple sources into one command operational picture. We have air traffic data that is being reported out to ground troops. We have ground troop data being reported out to aircrafts, and we're even bringing in ship data and sending that out to both the ground troops and the aircrafts. LifeRing is capable of processing massive amounts of data. The server sets filters in place to transmit the appropriate amounts of information to the user. As an example, when it comes to aircraft data, while we're capable of displaying the amount of data and more as seen on the slide, it's not practical to the ground troops or soldiers at the front who are using handsets to view all the information. So data is filtered down based on the location of the unit to only transmit to them the data that's pertinent to their position. The LifeRing software enables the exchange of data between all smartphones, tablets, and PC users up and down the chain of command by establishing a secure, ad hoc network between all participants. The software resolves disparity between different radio types, encryptions, data rates, protocols, and message formats, and provides push-to-talk communications between radios, private cellular networks, and satellite comms either individually or in various combinations all while providing aggregation of data that is viewable at each command level, which enables real-time situational awareness of the mapped area and the exact location of all participants. LifeRing interfaces with various systems to gather information. We can forward data from sensors such as radars, AIS, and tracking tags. We can communicate with most radios, including military, first responder, satellite and cellular, as well as weapon systems like AFATADs. We are able to do this with other NATO and U.S. Armed Forces C4I systems as well. What truly sets LifeRing apart is the ability to create true interoperability between various disparate systems. LifeRing is vendor agnostic and branch of military agnostic, in-country language agnostic, and maybe even technology agnostic. Let's take a look at some of the ways the software resolves communications between different radio types, encryptions, data rates, protocols, and message formats. Air Force Ground Command Centers correlate data from ground-based radars, intelligence systems, and AWACS to transmit the data on Link 16. Drones provide intel via video and cursor on target. At sea, naval vessels use Link 16 and OTH Gold and others. Meanwhile, soldiers in the field are using NetWarrior, which uses JVMF and ATAC, which uses cursor on target. Ground command centers using GCCS, JCR, and AFATADS with JVMF. NATO C4I forces use NIFI, STAN AG4677, and other protocols and formats to provide joint intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance data across multiple agencies. Depending on the use case, there are also FAA radars, covert tags, and nuclear sensors, as well as medical and logistics data. We are able to communicate with military, P-25, cellular and satellite radios, and MANAs. Through the LifeRing-enabled command center, we now have a scalable, integrated C4I common operational picture of the ground, air, and sea. Here's an example of how a LifeRing-enabled command center would display various data. We are currently in the process of installing a system like this. LifeRing works with a wide range of communication types, including public and private cellular, both military and first responder radios, as well as mesh and satellite networks. It also supports multiple encryptions, including AES 256-bit encryption and Department of Commerce-approved private algorithm encryption, to name a few. Let's take a look at how all this works in various real-live exercises. The first is a Network Integration Evaluation, or NIE, exercise for the Army, where we had two platoon command posts that were 30 miles apart and unable to receive communications between them. We used point-to-point -point radios to relay the information from one platoon to a company command center and then back down to the other platoon. The command center then sent the data to the WinT, 
and relayed it to a battalion command center. Later, we added an Iridium satellite link to enable communications with a user with an Iridium handset. The end result is that all users had a shared common operational picture. For the U.S. Navy, cellular communication base stations were temporarily installed on several ships and a helicopter to provide a common operational picture between them. The helicopter communicated data to Navy boarding boats via cellular data to direct them to board a vessel that was under investigation. When the ships moved out of range of each other for cellular communications, satellite communications were used to relay the data between the ships. All of the communications were monitored by a Navy sales facility in Norfolk. For the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, we used a PC-12 aircraft with an electro-optical infrared sensor, basically a ball camera, that transmitted video, the aircraft's location and the pointing angle, and the video's target location to a ground station. The video and the location data of the aircraft and target were sent to the LifeRing server, which was then sent out to LifeRing handsets, which could see the video as well as location data of where the video was recorded. For the Navy, we processed AIS data from ships as to their location, speed, and heading, and correlated that data with commercial radar satellite information, and then sent that display out to other ships with LifeRing handsets that showed the relative location of all the ships, as well as the history trail of the ship's movements and a photograph of the correlated radar satellite return. LifeRing is designed to meet the cycle of military operations. LifeRing stores data and photos obtained from patrols to assist in creation of an intelligence plan for the battlefield, IPB. LifeRing assists the commander's staff in creating a battlefield plan that reflects the commander's intent. LifeRing provides all the COP and the ability to compare the actual battle with the commander's intent and to execute it efficiently. LifeRing enables review or playback of military operations, as was seen on the displays during the battle. LifeRing support stores military operations, movement, and exchanged data and photos in an SQL database for later analysis and enables the user to remotely reset encryption passwords. Here is a list of some of LifeRing's core features and capabilities, and many of these were covered in the brief. Here are some examples that we're permitted to show where LifeRing was used successfully, along with the group who used it, and some brief details of the operations. Here are a couple of recommendation letters from clients. That's it. Thank you for your time and attention. If you would like a hard copy of this presentation, you can download it at www.agisinc.com forward slash C4I.